Welcome to GameCube for Life. My name is Dean and today I'm going to be showing you my Raspberry Pi 4 NES build. As a physical collector, I think that the NES Pi build looks really cool. If you own sealed games, you can play backup files or even declutter your house and put some items in storage, which might help if you are trying to avoid a messy divorce. So I originally started my Raspberry Pi journey with this Neo case. I thought it looked really cool. It had a, this awesome slip top case which gave me access to the main board. The case also acts as a heat sink. So I even purchased the additional hat fan which you know, works and I think it looks really cool. I was happy enjoying life and then I saw something on Reddit RetroPi that shook me to my core. Okay, maybe not that much, but it's really cool that he plays entire game collections off of one NES card. Now, Muzzy V2 is a modder. He's done some really cool mods. Here's some of his controllers. But with his NES build, he had an RGB link um, that allowed the video signal to go through the SNES connector. Um, he also um, connected the Pi Power directly through the NES power adapter. Uh, there's a few cuts into his case for USBs and he has a really good guide which I'll link down below. But for me it's cemented with the carts, with the, the look of the NES, it looked absolutely fantastic and I had to convert my Pi to a NES build. Now I know the NES Pi 4 is an option but you're never going to walk into a house and say, oh is that a NES? It is definitely the cheaper option, especially when you consider that the Raspberry Pi 4GB is going to set you back £54. So I had a few options. So I decided to go to the Nintendo Graveyard, which is also called eBay, to get a faulty NES. And then it was time to devise a plan. Well, first I had a beer, and then I devised a plan. So I decided to proceed with a very simple build. My desire was not to make any alterations to the exterior of the case, I didn't want to drill any holes or make any cuts. Any cables would need to go through existing holes in the case. I was going to copy the USB cart system and I would try and find a way of putting my Neo case inside and allow access to the SD card through the bottom. So with the lid off I took out a couple of screws to remove the heat shield. There are some more on the back. This bit here was uh, quite annoying. Once that's removed, this will show you the cartridge tray. You'll see in the top right corner, you have the power unit. Uh, you will need to remove four screws to remove the cartridge tray. There are two at the back, which you don't wish, want to remove because that is part of the tray. When you do take those screws out, it releases the 72 pin connector, which we'll be working with later. As soon as I cleared the NES, I cut out these brackets, they were in the way for mounting the Pi. I also cleared out the NES connectors because I knew I wasn't going to use them. I had decided to put USBs on the front of the case. This was because I didn't want to cut anywhere else around it. Now these were available on Wish and after a lot of searching I found them. I originally decided to actually strip them and see if I could put it connected to the Pi straight through the connector holes, but unfortunately due to the build of the NES case it wasn't going to work because this particular part blocked it and made the pie stick up in the back. So I've got these bits of plastic and put the USBs back in their case, stuck them down, cut the front off, and so they would allow it to sit flush with the actual case. It does look a bit wonky there. That's purely because there's a small bracket on the front that allows it to connect. I had to keep that. But as you can see, it looks quite nice, quite plush. I also purchased some USB connectors, female to female. This also allowed me to glue it down to the case, which meant that putting the USB in and out of the case, it should move and should be quite firm. So the next problem I had to solve was how was I going to mount the Neo case and access the SD card. Now there was this particular panel I was tempted to knock out and potentially put the Pi on top of that section. But unfortunately once the Pi was in place then there wasn't any room to actually put the cartridge tray back on. Without the Neo case it would have worked. The solution was genius if I don't say so myself. I did a bit of searching and found a SD card extension cable. I was able to mount it to that plastic panel we discussed earlier and uh, used a bit of electrical tape. I then threaded the ribbon through and then I could connect it straight to the Raspberry Pi and it only cost £3.99. So 
So the next part of the build was probably for me the most difficult. I secured this cart which was not in very good condition, it was practically dead. And uh, once open I took all the chips off the board um, with my soldering iron and some clippers, it was not easy work. And then I began to actually connect a USB cable which I cut up and attached it directly to the board. As it was the first time that I've done anything like this, I decided to use a sharpie to trace the connectors. But be aware that there are also some connectors on the back side of the board as well, which you can see here. Once that was done, I used some hot glue to glue the USB connector to the top of the case, which then held the USB stick in place. Next came the real fun when I had to connect the USB cable to the 72 pin connector. I started by tracing the actual pins that I needed to connect and it might have actually been easier to solder directly onto the pins from here, but I decided to do the much harder technique and actually solder underneath uh, on the basis that it would have been easier to actually protect the cable and glue. I'm not so sure myself now. At one point I even considered cutting this section out of the main board and actually sliding it into the 72 pin connector and soldering directly onto these points. Let me know if you think in the comments if it would have actually worked. So that is part one finished, I hope you enjoyed it. In part two I'm going to go through the issues I had with securing my Neo case. I know what you're thinking, why are you bothering? Well I paid for it, I'm going to use it, plus the calling is really good. Um, I'm also going to show you how I actually wired up the NES case as well. So again, if you liked it, please subscribe and like and uh, hope you look forward to part two.